Okay. Mm-hmm. Did it again. Don't, don't, don't just. Sorry. Aesthetics. It's important. Okay. So, well, welcome to one point four. Um, classroom actions. So, I'm going to go through the PowerPoint for this one. Um, and uh, try to address some things before you watch all the videos that may help. Um, do, 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 do. This is the video lecture. Um, all right, so the, the snapshot videos are going to deal with articles um, and the idea of setting up a noun before you show the action. And uh, I will go through that, just a brief overview. Um, then there's an explanation of the nouns and verbs, some examples. Um, and the, the next part is, uh, activity that we would do in the classroom. We'll do a variation of it in class. Um, we're, we're discussing problems, brainstorming, working in a group. Um, this is sort of for future activities. So I can give you instructions on here. We're going to do this. I want you to do this together. So some basic vocabulary for that. Then, um, really it's the same if you're working in a group, working with a partner. Um, so some signs for that, and then we'll review vocab. So the first thing in the snapshots is dealing with articles. The, this, that, a, and an. Um, really, we have a few different signs for that. Um, for the most part, it's point. We point to a location, establish a location for something. Um, we also can use the Y hand shape. Boom. We use it for OIC, right? Oh, the, a way of thinking of that is that, 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 that. In Japanese, they have so, 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 right? So that, so you can go, oh, that, oh, that's cool. That, or I didn't know what to do. That, mm. uh, We use it a lot if we're in ASL, if we're talking about something nebulous, and then we sort of hit on that, that thing. Oh, I didn't know what to do, blah, blah, that. Um, if, you will see it also if someone is describing something, but there's not a vocab sign for it. They may describe all around it and then say that. Um, I remember being told by an older deaf man that they didn't have a sign for lawn or yard. It would be like grassy area, grass, green area, have to mow that. So that's a common setup where we describe it in many different ways and then end with that. So that's a, keep your eye out for that. It'll be weird to use, but once you start seeing it used, then it will make sense. And at some point, probably in ASL2, maybe in ASL1, you'll find yourself signing something and go that and be like, oh, oh, I just did it because I had that experience. Okay, so that's the, this, that, a, and. Um, we will oftentimes, when we set something up, a establish a point in our signing space for it. So I could say, I'm going to go to the store. Well, I'm just establishing over there. So if I were to say with object, subject, verb, store there, I go. Or friend, hmm, I know. Um, person over there, I know. So we're using this to uh, some people will call it indexing. You'll see like uh, IX written in a gloss, and that means point to it. That's really helpful to get used to because we can, otherwise it's nebulous. Store, I go. Where? Store over there, I go. My cousin, I like. So try to start incorporating. We don't always use it but start practicing that kind of sentence structure now so that it becomes natural to just incorporate those pointing, that, that pointing. Um, the other thing is the noun and verb. So let me go, let me give some examples. Um, I want the bike. So the sign for bicycle is this, like the pedals, bike. And we, I think we've already gone over want, right? We did want and don't want, and I. So object, subject, verb, right? Bike, me want, which bike? Just a bike in general? Okay. Bike I want, I want a bike for Christmas, right? My birthday's coming up and I'm expecting a bike from each and every one of you students. It's not too unreasonable, I'm totally kidding. So if you sign, 
bike me want or bike want, notice the, the me is sort of assumed because I didn't give a pronoun or a subject. Um, that's A. I want a bike. Um, if you want that bike, that specific bike, then you would sign bike that one I want or bike that one I want. Okay. So you can point to it or you can say that one. Um, and then dog me want. You could do. If you're in the pound and you're looking at all the dogs, you're like, hmm. And you can even repeat at the end that one. That one. Don't give me the little uh, that one over there. Give me that one. I want the big mastiff, the Tibetan mastiff. I want a Tibetan mastiff. That's what I want for my birthday. Forget the bike thing. I want that, a Tibetan mastiff. So if you happen to have a spare puppy, adult, I don't care, I'll name him Mouse, and we'll be all set. Sorry, just being weird. Okay. So the next concept that was in there is nouns and then verbs. And the easiest way I can explain it, the simplest way, is object, subject, verb. We've already given that grammatical structure. The object is what you're talking about, the book. So I want you to open your book. Book, you open the book. Right. So it's, it's that same basic concept. It helps visually to show book. Now you know I'm talking about the book. Book. So boop, boop, book, you open. And this is the general sign for open. It could be like open the store, open whatever. This is the generic sign. We can apply it by showing the book opening, the door opening, your, your mind opening up. Welcome to college. Um, so book, you open the book. Um, I'm trying to remember what other ones. Page, you turn, turn the page, right? Uh, box, you open. So um, uh, any number of things. So cup, so it's a C on the hand, cup, you put down over there, put down over there. Right? So it's that object, subject, verb grammatical structure. Um, so book you open, book you close or close. And you could be specific of close. It could go close. It could go close. Pencil. There's an old fashioned thing where you'd lick the tip of the pencil to get it to write. And I don't know if that was because it was lead and we we're probably getting lead poisoning. And that's why my generation is the way it is. Actually, more along the lines of that's why boomers are the way they are. I accept no responsibility. So pencil, there, pick up. Um, pen, well, I don't have a pencil out. I've got a pen. Here we go. Want the pencil. So pencil, so pencil, there, pick up. Book there, give the book to me. We'll do the sign for give, but I'll introduce a bunch of other ones as we do this stuff. But the same concept of book there, book you, drink there, um, pencil there, put over there, right? Or pencil you, put it down. We're done with the test. Raise hand. I mean, just hand, raise. Hand, you, raise. I, I won't ask you to raise anybody else's hand, especially not during COVID. Um, teacher, student, discuss. Again, the object, subject, verb. Teacher, student, we to discuss. Um, 
I'm trying to think of a better way right now. We're kind of getting off that object thing. This is a lot of giving direction within the classroom. So we've now moved away from pencils and, and objects, but now we're using that same structure. Um, you could say, so discuss, teacher, student, discuss. So you're setting up a kind of topic. Uh, need to talk about that. Teacher, student, discuss. Um, another <laughs> look at your watch, watch, look at. So again, the object, the watch, this is what I'm going to talk about. And it's the F hand shape. Um, and then I'm going to tell you to look at it. So I set up the watch and then I tell you to look at it. It's a perfect setup for me going. Sometimes the examples that they put in the slideshows can seem a little weird. Um, as you as you're watching the videos, just sort of think, well, what is the sentence structure we've been using and what carries over? So I'm giving another order. Stand up. You stand up. Right. So you, that's the object. I'm going to have you stand up. Here's you. Or you get up, get up, you get up, get out of here. Um, board. So imagine there's a whiteboard. And if, if we don't have a board, I might just set one up arbitrarily in space right on the board. I could be over on the side. That board, right on it. So I will use the pointing for that. So, so you go over and write, right on that board. So I'm not going all the way over to the actual board, but if I set it up in space in the sort of miniaturized version of the room that is my signing space, I can say the board's over there, go right on it. Um, the corner over there, go stand in it. Um, and then sit down. You like, I could say over there, sit down, sit chair over there, go sit chair over there in the corner. I'm going to go sit because I'm giving myself a timeout. I didn't have enough coffee today. Um, so turning the page. Sometimes people will do this. Uh, it's gotten a little confusing with swipe left, swipe right, people doing this. So I see most often this for page. And this is the book and you're just turning the page. Um, we also use look up instead of the A, we use this. This is also a sign for research. You're going to comb through carefully, unlike internet research if you're like people who are researching covid I i'm watching my youtube uh, some people sign youtube like this with the y movie i i don't i'm one of the camp that doesn't like it i'll finger spell youtube but um think self think self look around for signs for it i will recommend finger spelling and we can always use the practice finger spelling so page, turn the page, page four, or page four, turn the page, page four, look, um, research, look up and some, and we'll also lower it down as you're working your way down the page, looking it up, um, definition. There are two signs I've seen used for definition. One is definition. And it's two F's and I like pull them back and forth. It's the sign for to explain. So I'm defining something. I'm explaining it. Another way I've seen is dun, dun, and it's like a person standing on the wall and then flipping 180 degrees. It's the sign for meaning. And sometimes we alternate, you know, we do this with the hand or this. This is a little bit harder to do. This ends up being easier. It's kind of weird, but meaning. The meaning, the definition, the definition. And then the sign for translate, translate, translation. So page, go to page four or page four, 
go to page four. Um, word, you'll see word like this, word, word, I, because remember we did sentence. So that sentence, that line, this is one of the words in it. So word you look up. Definition there, read. Um, word there, translate. Or word there, translate. Word there, translate. Okay. So a lot of different ways that we can now start piecing together other signs that we've learned to make sentences. Answer. Answer. It's two index fingers and they're palm forward. It's also tell um, or order. A lot of it depends on the facial expression. If I'm ordering you, do this versus I'm going to give you my answer. Um, if you do it palm back this way, you could say, oh, I, I'll tell you. It's more like say or tell. Um, and then check is this. It's research once. Answer in the book, check. Okay, on the board, check. Okay, so see how you can apply them. Um, then, oh, oh, it's hard to see this. Let me get this thing out of the way. And I don't know if I can move this thing much. Oh, God, that's moving the whole. Nope, nope, nope. There we go. Try to get that out. Oh, well, oh, okay. Okay, I can do that. Um, so copy. The sign we learned for learn is this, right? You're taking the information, sucking it all up in your hand, and then putting it in your head. This we will use for copy because you suck up the information and you put it somewhere else. So I could copy it from the book and put it on the board. I could copy it from the board and put it in my notes. Um, I could take it from this board and put it on this board. I could take it from here and put it on my forehead. So copy. And then whatever you do with this is the next action. Ba, 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 ba. So word there, copy. Word on the board, copy and put down in your notes. Um, picture. Um, photograph we've seen for snapshot, right? I, I, I was doing, I used to do this, and a friend, the same friend who told me about um, motorcycle, which I'll get to, uh, said, you don't have two shutters on your camera. You have one. So do photograph, photograph, right? Um, he's the one who told me, um, I used to sign motorcycle like this, because that was how I learned it. And he was like, he slapped, I was interpreting for him, he slapped my hand. I'm like, what? He went, you don't do it with the left hand. Only the right hand does this. The left hand, maybe you do this, but this is going to be awkward to sign for a motorcycle. We just do this, motorcycle. Sorry, I don't have one. I don't, I'm not, I'm like moped guy, if anything. They're so cheap. Anyway, so photograph, picture comes from an older version of that where you would take a picture and print it out on photo paper right so boom. that was the old sign and then it kind of be went from photograph to just touching your forehead so it's almost think picture picture so again that's that drift in signs so photograph or picture eh, let's do picture instead of photograph photograph for this picture you draw and we use the pinky finger for draw we'll use like we're holding a pencil for write. we'll use a pinky for draw we use two fingers for paint because it's paintbrush is a little thicker than a pencil hopefully usually so write draw paint sweet So the next set of vocab is working with your classmates. So we can discuss a problem and as a group, we can discuss it 
It's like a round of applause, right? Discuss. And then the sign for problem, uh, if you're in the class where someone said they were learning physics, they were studying physics, we probably learned it. If not, they're all usually using these bent Vs, P sign bent. And there's a couple of different variations that all mean kind of the same thing. You've got this, if you just brush them up against each other, this means difficult and it can also mean problem. Oh, that's, I got a problem. Oh, I got a problem. That's difficult, right? Um, you can do this, boom, and it means hard. Oh, that's hard. Fingers. I hate it. Finger spelling. Hard. Um, and you'll also see this problem. Remember the sign for pain and headache? So the sign for pain. Most problems are a pain, right? So you're, and it's kind of hard to, to rub them up against each other. Um, it doesn't seem like it, but it, it'll make sense. You'll get caught. So problem, 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 difficult, hard. All can be interchanged depending on the sentence. The sign for physics, ironically, is this physics, because physics is hard. Cool. Now, brainstorming solutions. Brainstorming, there's a couple of different signs. The book, uh, True Way, does uh, brainstorm or brainstorm. So here you've got a thought. Everyone is thinking and throwing out their ideas, throwing them into the group. Could be a group of people throwing in their ideas. I've also seen this one for brainstorm, which is the sign for create or imagine. And so it, you know, it's a group of people and we're all trying to create, imagine some new solution, right? Sign for solution is this. If you have a problem and you solve it, it melts away and is gone. Solution. Um, we will use this sort of having something and it melts away in other contexts as well. So if you think about it as in this problem going away, problem, problem solved. Um, and then answers, I need a little velociraptor claw, need answers, problem solved. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Work in a group. So work in a group, work, you can also sign, if you put the two fists together, the two A's, palm to palm, together. Group, work, together. Group. Now, I'm using G for group. Uh, it's a very English phrase um, or English sign. You can do this. And this is each of the individual people in the group, right? So similar signs for family group association, you, you guys group up and brainstorm. Okay, makes sense. Work in a group. I just did that. Work, group, work. Oh, that's because I went back and then came back. Um, help. This is a situation where could you help this other person in class? And help is, remember we've used this as a person, person in the basement, creepy. Um, yourself. I touched on it in the other, it, when I was talking about pronouns, you, your, yourself. So here's a person. Uh, game, sweetheart. This is a representative of a person. Uh, representation, I suppose I should say. So if I'm going to help, I am going to lift that person up. This person's having a hard time and I'm going to help and lift them up. It's the, uh, it's going to seem a little, it may seem a little bit weird. Help is this. I'm, I'm showing the person that I'm going to help. So the active hand goes on top. Um, I could help you. Um, the old sign was this, I would like, I would take your arm and lead you where I want to go, help, help, help. And gradually 
like that proximalization that we talked about how signs drift, it went, moved its way down to here. So help. And it switched hands. Help. It's very odd. Technically, it should be this. Oh, I will help you. I will pick you up and I will move you where you need to go. And this is my active hand moving the object. But we switch it. Help. It's almost like a stamp of approval. I'm going to give you a stamp that I'm going to help you. Right? I'll help you. And I can help you. Can you help me? You help her. Um, classmate and peer. Peer is someone who's an equal. Equal, right? So class equal. Um, you can also do like other. Boom. It's not me. It's another person. That one over there. Student. Student. Peer. Class. Other. Student. Uh, or just point. Mm, student. Help me. Student. I help. So we're incorporating that pointing again. Now I realize that with each of these successive ones, it's going to start to melt your brain. Pause this video. Practice each successive one. So go back. Practice. Pause. You know. Pra pause. Practice the sentence. Then play the next one. Um, I'm going to put a lot of information in these so I can get it one entire video. Um, so uh, hopefully you can watch the pic. Well, it's over on the side. Hopefully you can watch the pictures that are here. And then as you fast forward through the video, you can find wherever you left off. Um, working with a peer or partner. They kind of group these up, but they're all, they could have all been one big group. So ask. Uh, there are two ways of signing ask. The one is using that question mark, ask, ask, and it flicks out or it becomes a hook that you sink in. Let me ask you something, ask. I tend to do this. Some people regionally do this. I'm going to ask you something. I'm going to ask you something. Ask, 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 ask. So I draw a little question mark, boom, and point at you. Ask you. The other way you can do it is if it's more of a request. Could you help me? help me? Can I request help? As opposed to asking a question, can you give me information? Um, and it can be directional. Ask me, ask you, ask them. Ask them. You can even repeat it. Well, oftentimes uh, when I'm asking, how are you? I'll do this at the, at the end of class. Do any of you have any questions for me? Boop, 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 boop. Um, sign for share. Share. So here's the piece of cake. I cut it in half. You get half. I get half. Share. It's kind of like it's the sign for between as well, between here and here. Share. Um, share. Book we shared, both looking at the same time. Make sense? Dictating a sentence. It's a little bit more complicated concept because it's one person saying something or signing something and the other person writing it down. So we're going to show that process. So it can be you, um, you say something, I will put it down or I will write it down. You talk, I will write. Or you answer, I will plop it down on paper, or I will write it on the board. Right? So dictate is not one simple sign. It's a description. And then sentence, sentence. So that sentence, you talk, I will write it on the board. Okay. So practice those and you can switch things out. Um, where you write, um, is it in the book? Is it on your arm? I'm going to write your number on my hand. So your phone number, you say, I will write it down in my palm. Call me maybe. Why, that's an annoying song. Anyway, fingerspelling. <laughs> Gear change. 
double letters. How do we treat double letters? Now we've dealt with all the letters. There are three different ways that we deal with repeating letters. And a lot of times it will be just the feel. What feels right? What feels good? What is easy to reproduce? Sometimes it changes based on the letter, based on the letters that come before and after, where it is in, this, in the word. Um, but in general, here are some rules to think of. You can slide the letter where it will like E-E, E-E, -E, L-L, my name, L-A-R-R-Y. Just a slight push to the outside. You can do repeated contact, which means, excuse me, producing uh, both the letter twice. So um, B-O-B-B-Y. Uh, so B O B B Y. I tend to I tend to not slide my double letters very often. Only at the end of words. I tend to do a double bounce or a repeated contact. Um, so the repeated contact uh, D D. This is probably a better example. D D D D D D. Because I'm just clamping down. S S. S S. Minnow. Back in here, right there. Okay, so you can slide M I N N O W, M I N N O W, or bounce M I N N O W. So the one that differs is double Z. So the letter Z is this. If we're going to do a double Z, we could go, but that's a lot of work and that's like going to throw my arm out. I'm going to get like tennis elbow from it. So it's a lot less work if you just put two Z's out front and go zh, 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 pizza. It's actually a, a vocab word for pizza is we go za, za, right? So you draw the double Z, A. Mozzarella. Um, so here's some names. This is one where I would slide, A-A-L. If it's at the end of a word, it's really easy to slide to the last letter, A-A-L. I, B, I tend to bounce, A-B-B-Y, A-B-B-Y, B. -B -Y. B. It just feels weird to me, but you can do it, A-B-B-Y, R-E-B-E-C-C-A, R-E-B-E-C-C-A. There's no double touch. It's just the bounce because it doesn't actually close. Um, Todd, I tend to do a D like this. I think it's clearer than this, and it's fewer fingers, so it's a lot less uh, energy. T-O-D-D, T-O-D-D, T-O-D-D. Each of them works. I tend to like this duk -duk better. You can bounce it, D-D, T-O-D-D. Kareem. I noticed it for myself, and I think it's pretty consistent, is that those fist letters are really easy to slide. Any letter that has to close on itself or um, has some kind of movement, it's really hard to slide them. Like, you would never do double J. Well, in Arabic, if you're writing down words in Arabic, I think H-A-J-J -J for Hajj, you would repeat the letter. You can't really, because if you did this, it would be J either a line or J I, and that's that would just be awkward. So J J, um, name signs J J, J J. Just repeat this, repeat the letter. So you can go through all of these. Um, T T T T H U R I T T number sixteen. Who, who. Uh, B. Mississippi. That's a good one to practice. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -I, -S -S -I, I, I would keep them all the same. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S -S so that's a good one to practice. And then Izzy. I-Z-Z-Y. And 
ZZY is great because you get ZZA, ZZY, ZZ. If you're a Grease fan, R I double Z O. Zo. My favorite character is Zo. Zoe Lofgren. No. I don't even know what that's from. Anyway. Um, so the conversation started as they keep bringing it up is like uh, each time is a new question. So what is the sign for? So this is going to be the one we're going to do now. Um, remember object, subject, verb. So the object is you're going to act out whatever you're asking about. And then that sign what? So... What's the sign for golf? So I would act it out and illustrate it. So walking, have, so that's better than finger spelling. I mean, you can do finger spell sign what, um, but you, one, we hate finger spelling, right? And two, it doesn't communicate as much because if that person doesn't know what your finger spelling or if you spell it wrong, there's confusion. But if you act it out, it could be much easier. Uh, the example in the conversation starter um, does just that. So she will describe something and you and the person is trying to answer, which it kind of frustrates me that something that simple and the person's like, oh, I don't know what to sign for it is. Um, like, duh, it's a bad example. I'm going to call out bad examples in this book. So you're just going to have to deal with it. But you're going to have to just deal with me being a crotchety old guy. So pick up. We didn't, I didn't really practice that one and show it. Pick up using the F and you kind of pick it up, right? So it's doot, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Um, raise hand, teacher, student, discuss, talk, talk, uh, stand, sit, stand, sit, stand up, sit down. Board, and by board, at first I was thinking wood, like a two by four, a plank. No, it's the whiteboard or the blackboard. Um, ba -ba 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 copy from, remember, shunk, whichever direction you're doing it. Um, word. So remember, there's a sentence, and that's the word, one piece of it. Look it up. Page. Definition or definition. Read. Translate or translation. Answer or tell. Check. It's like you're putting a check mark on your hand. Um, copy. Put down on paper. Um, picture, boop, picture, or photo, <clears throat> photo, and draw or paint. We did discuss, we did talk about problem. Brainstorm or solve answers. So we can just take it. Answer, 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 answer. Help. Need help, want help. Classmate. Or class together. This is my classmate. You could say, we have class together. Together. Ask, 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 request, reply, question. We use this, at, remember, at the end of the like, yes, no questions. Like, you happy? You better not be. This is hard work. Uh, share. I hit my finger. Share. Book. Dictate. 
right? So someone talks, someone writes it down or writes it down. And then sentence, those are out of order. That's weird. Um, all right, so I think, yep, I'm only authorized to use this in class. So that gives an overview. Um, take a look at the videos. If there's anything that I missed or if you have any questions about something, let me know, email me or ask me in class. Cool. Hope all is well.